how to get into Sac State's nursing program. So what I have planned for you guys today is um, majority of it is just going to be like me going through the um, prereqs, um, the point system, um, the optional criteria, the T's. I know a lot of people had questions about that. Okay, so it's going to be presented by Parks Pre-Nursing Advisor, Mentor, and Tutor, which is me. That's like the most recent picture I have of myself. <laughs> oh, wait, let me present that. There we go. Okay. So today's agenda, um, from 5 to 5.10, we're just going to do introductions and agenda. Well, I'm, only, I'm the only person here, but I'll do my own introduction. Um, and then from 5.10 to 5.45, I have... Uh, the presentation and then questions along the way if you want if you have any questions along the way um, just like take yourself off mute and then you can go ahead and ask and if not I'll have I'll take questions at the end as well and then towards the end I will have a couple of guest speakers from these are students who are in the nursing program right now with me um, and they'll just allow, I'm asking them to like talk about their experience in like applying for the nursing program and how they're doing right now so yeah that's what we're doing today. So about me, um, my name is Kelly Huynh. I'm a third year first semester nursing student. Um, that's about it. <laughs> At PARC, um, which is also known as the Peer and Academic Resource Center, um, I'm the pre-nursing advisor, mentor, and tutor, um, which basically means that I focus on the pre-nursing students and the pre-nursing courses, which is what most of you guys are taking. Even though I am the pre-nursing advisor, I am still open for tutoring to all other students. Like say, if you were taking um, chem, chemistry and you wanted help in chemistry I, and you're not a nursing major, I could still help you in that. Or if you wanted um, tutoring in like writing, I do, I do get a lot of students for writing tutors. Um, so my office hours um, are Mondays from 12.30 to 2.30 p.m. and then Tuesdays from 9 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. And, and from 2 to 2.30 p.m. And you would join through Park's um, Zoom link, which is right here. So when you make an appointment through Park, it should send you the link. And when um, you get that appointment, you would, you would enter the Zoom link and then you would be put into a breakout room with me. So. That's what would happen if you were to make an appointment with me. Okay, next. All right, let us begin. Uh, disclaimer, I have a lot of information. So if I'm going too fast, someone just let me like take yourself on mute and let me know because there's going to be a lot of information. All right, okay. Yeah. It's me, Fernando. Um, there is a question on the chat uh, mm -hmm. asking where the video would be uploaded on or at to where would it be? Uh, that is a good question. I believe it would be uploaded to the parks um, resource guide. Um, I would have to get back to you on that, but I think it would be up on like parks website. If not, you can also email park and then ask them for um, this workshop recording. Sound okay? That's a very good question. Okay, so we're starting off with, oh, someone have a question? Oh, okay. Um, so we'll just start off with the basics. So basically applying into the nursing program, it's based off a point system and you get points from your GPA and from your TS exam and from um, optional criteria. So you need 60 points to apply, but you can get a maximum of 88 points. And those, again, they would come from your STEM prereqs, which is like your science courses, and that would factor into your science GPA. And then you have your GE prereqs, which is like your English, your stats, um, your comms and your like critical thinking, which factors into your nursing GPA and then your adjusted nursing GPA. And then you have the TEAS, which I'm sure as you guys are pre-nursing students, you should know about the TEAS. It's just um, like a standardized uh, test that every nursing student needs to take before they get into clinical, like clinical admission. You would need a 75% to apply for a SACS program but I know that for the average for fall 2020, which is not my 
not my cohort, but the cohort before me, their average was around a 91% for the admitted students. Um, and then you have your optional criteria, which is again, not stuff that you have to do, but you could do to get extra points if you needed to. Um, I think the maximum is you can get 18 points and they're all like scattered out. You could do volunteer work at a hospital. You could be like a LVN or a CNA. Um, you could take the bilingual proficiency. So if you speak another language, you would, um, you would have to find the instructor to test you and then fill out a form for the language and then you would get points on those. Um, you get extra points if you're a first generation student, a first generation college student. Um, you wouldn't have to submit anything for this one as well as the local student. Um, that would just be on like your student um, record. The local student means um, if you were like a Sacramento State student or if you went to high school in the Sacramento area, or if you were a commute, if you were a community college student, also in the Sacramento area, I believe. Um, so the nurse, the science GPA consists of your STEM prereqs, which is like your anatomy, um, physiology, chemistry, and microbiology. This GPA is, um, you don't get any points for this GPA, the points, the point system at the top right here. Um, it's only if you're eligible and if you're not, but you do need a 3.0 to apply. And then for your nursing GPA, again, same thing with the science GPA, it's, uh, you don't get rewarded any points for this. It's either you're eligible or you're not, and you have to have a 3.3 zero zero one to apply and then this average right here the 3.957 is from the class of fall 2020 that was admitted same thing for down here um the adjusted nursing gpa is sort of like the nursing gpa but it incorporates all your all your prereqs and and the co-recs and this one you do get points for um you would need a 3.3002 to apply. And again, the average for last, last semester students was a 4.0. This is where the majority of your points from up here come from because the average 4.0 would get you 40 points. Okay. Um, I'm gonna check the chat, see if there's any questions. Ooh, okay, there's a lot of questions. Okay, okay, let me see. Does the volunteer work have to be in a hospital or can it be in a healthcare facility like a nursing home? It can be, I'm pretty sure it can be in a nursing home as well. You just have to have the required like documentation that you worked in like a healthcare facility. Um, you would turn that in when you uh, um, submit your application. To find the the bilingual exam. Oh yes, thank you, Fernando, for putting that in there. Um, so Fernando did include the link if you guys want to look for the languages for the nursing program. And then I have a question that will be answered later. Um, suggestions for volunteer work. I personally wasn't able to volunteer. Um, just cause when I was, the summer that before I applied, I was going to, but then COVID happened. So they never, um, they never, uh, sorry, they didn't accept volunteers, but I know that in the Sacramento area, you can apply at Kaiser or at um, Sutter, if I am correct. And then the points you get for the volunteer work depend on the amount of hours that you um, volunteer. But I could definitely um, look for more information. Um, would working in the front desk at a hospital, for example, like Kaiser, be a good volunteer work? Um, I'm not sure about that one. Uh, front desk at a hospital. I think as because like as a volunteer, you're not like licensed to do like patient care and stuff. So I believe it's whatever they assign you to do, but I think there is like a, um, 
there's a criteria that you have to meet as a as the um the volunteer work for it to count. I will have to look into that more for you, um, just because I personally didn't um, do any volunteer work. But again, I will look into that. Can I add to that? Yes, go ahead. Um, so for the volunteer work, one thing they do know is uh, you do have to have that client interaction. So even if it is like virtual or remote work, as long as you're making that remote, um, that client interaction, that's what they're gonna count for in terms of the volunteer. Mm -hmm. And you have, I know there's like a certain criteria of volunteer work that you have to um, meet. It can't, I don't know if um, the front desk counts as like patient care or like client care. Uh, being a caregiver, I am not sure about the caregiver. I will have to get back to you on that one. Okay. If you have your CNA license, does that count as hours? Your CNA license? I believe it does. It just, I think you have to have some hours as a CNA for it to count as your hours. So you could submit your CNA license and then you could submit the hours that you worked as a CNA. Um, what if I had contact with client volunteer in high school? Would it still count? Client in high school. Ooh, I'm not sure about the um, recency for volunteer work, but I think it would be best if it was like sort of recent. Letter of there are some paperwork that you would need to fill out in, in determining your hours. Um, what semesters are the GPA based on? It is based, the GPA is based on your courses, not necessarily your um, semesters. So like if you take all your STEM courses, um, it's just gonna be based off your courses. Yeah, not necessarily which semester. And it'll, you could choose which grade you want to put. For volunteer, does it need to be in a specific time frame? Yes, in terms of when your application is due. Okay, okay, okay. I will go on to the next slide now because I have more information for you guys. Okay, so here, so I think I guess it's like the same thing as before. So the science GPA again. The question I had a question if it was what semester is based on, it's just based on the courses and the grades that you got in those courses. So your science GPA and your nursing GPA is sort of the same. You don't get any points for it and it's only eligible or non-eligible. So if you don't meet these requirements, you cannot apply. Um, then you have your nursing GPA. Again, this is where the majority of your 88 points come from, the maximum 88 points. If you get an average 4.0, you get a maximum of 40 points. Um, the T's, again, 75%. Um, this is where you also get a good chunk of your points. Um, but I know some students who don't get a lot of points here usually fall back with the optional criteria, which is where you can get the 80 points. And again, those averages from earlier are from fall 2020, not from my semester, not from my cohort, but the cohort before me. Okay. So these are your prereq courses. So the courses are acceptable regardless of date completed. There's no recency required, no, no recency requirements, um, but the courses must be completed with the C minus or better grade. Um, I did have a question if uh, the pluses or minus count in the GPA, they do not count. So if you get a C minus, it'll be counted as a C on your GPA. Um, so the prereq courses include your oral communication, written communication, critical thinking, stats, chemistry, anatomy and physiology, and microbiology. And then over here in bold are the courses that are offered at Sac State. Um, so you could take comms four, comms five for oral communication, written communication, you could take English five, five M or English 11, 11 M. Uh, critical thinking, you could take anthropology four, comms 2, education 10 or 10H, environmental science 11, journalism 50, 
philosophy four, physics 30, and sociology eight. Um, statistics, you could take stat one, stat 10, A or 10 B and stat 50. I put an asterisk at stat 50 because the nursing department stated that this course, this statistics course is a little more difficult. And if you don't wanna do that, you can also always take the stat one course because they just take any GE area before statistics course. Um, chemistry, you could take Chem 6A or Chem 1A. A lot of the nursing students that I know um, who are trying to get in, who, who were trying to get into nursing took Chem 6A. Um, I don't have, I don't know anyone who took Chem 1A, but I heard that Chem 6A is pretty easier, but it's just, you have to get into the course because um, wait lists and like just a lot of students trying to take Chem 6A. And then you have your anatomy and physiology series. You have to take um, bio 25 and 26 together. I I don't think you can do bio 25 and bio 131. You have to take 25 and 26 or 22 and 131. Um, again, most nursing students that I knew took bio 25 and 26. Um, and then you have your microbiology class, which is bio 39 or by 139. Okay, let me check the was, chat now. Miranda asked, can any of these courses be in progress while applying for the TEs? That's a good question. I will get into that later. Um, let me see. What if one of the requirements was from high school? Do they count that grade? No, they only count the courses that you've taken in college, unless it was like an AP test. So like, okay, not here, but like in one of the co-recs is psychology. If you've taken the AP test for psychology, just, that just counts as a pass. You don't get a grade and that doesn't get counted into your GPA. Um, for psychology, do we need to have a high grade. I'm gonna answer that in the next slide because that's about Corex. Can you take, yes, you can definitely take these courses over the summer as long as they are offered and as long as they're in the right time frame of when you want to apply. Um, do the chem classes at Sac State also have a lab component? Yes, they do. Um, when COVID first started, I was taking chem and we just moved onto an online format. Okay, move on to the next slide now. Also, so we now, oh, sorry. Sorry, I was gonna say, there was also another question asked by a student. Um, if you recommend taking classes in the summer, like, yeah, yeah, taking classes in the summer. Oh, do I recommend it? Yeah. Um, it depends on how studious you are as a student over summer, because I know that some students like the summer off. Um, I had a friend who took bio 26 over the summer. She said a lot of it was kind of self-study on her own because it was a little rushed. It, was, it wasn't the full 16 weeks. I'm pre I think it was the eight weeks that she took and she had classes Monday through Thursday. Um, but she, she, was, she did good. She got an A in the class over the summer. And it, I guess it, it, it really just depends on how you are as a student and how studious you will be over the summer. Um, are the summer courses covered by FAFSA? So the summer courses for financial aid is a little different. You have to apply for um, like financial aid for summer courses, but you would get reimbursed for it. So you would still have to pay up front, And then when like the classes begin, they would reimburse you for FAF for um, if you get FAFSA, like financial aid, if that makes sense. If we have a credit, no credit class because of COVID, would that negatively affect us? I think it would because for these like prereq classes, you need a grade for it to count into your GPA. I do remember that when they told us um, about the credit, no credit thing for COVID to put it as your classes for like GEs only because um, for your major, it might affect you. Yeah. Okay, so now we have our co-rec courses. Um, these courses are not required for um, clinical admission, but they are recommended to be completed prior to clinical admission. 
and it's a total of four classes. You have lifespan, human development, um, psychology, um, societal cultural patterns, and nutrition. And then again, the bolded courses are the ones that are offered at Sac State. Um, but then again, like, like I said earlier, if you've taken the AP psychology exam back in high school, which is what I did, it just counts as like a pass. Like it doesn't count against you. It doesn't count. It doesn't benefit you. It's just, it's just checked off. Well, we need to have an A for psychology. Um, I say try to aim for an A because that's definitely going to um, apply into your, um, your adjusted nursing GPA, which I will get into later. And again, your adjusted nursing GPA is going to give you the majority of your points for um, the point system. Since these aren't required, did you end up taking these classes? Yes, I did because um, I had an extra semester on my hands. Well, not extra, but like, I didn't realize that I would be a semester like behind in like the four year thing. So I ended up just taking these courses anyways. They were really helpful and especially like nutrition. It was really helpful for me in, in terms of anatomy. Um, these courses would aid in your GPA. Yes, these courses would help your, um, your GPA for the adjusted nursing GPA. Our co-rec courses are not to be considered when we apply to the program. Um, they do apply to your adjusted nursing GPA, again, which I will get into a bit later. Okay. Don't worry, guys. I have, I have like all the information out for you guys. <laughs> Good questions. I like your question. Okay, so your science GPA. So your science GPA, you need a minimum of 3.0. Again, you don't get any points for it. It's just if you're eligible or you're not. And your science courses are anatomy, physiology, chemistry, and microbiology. The GPA that you have to include three of these grades. So you could use anatomy, physiology, chemistry, or physiology, chemistry, micro, microbiology. It just has to have three. You can have all four if it helps you, but it only needs three. Only one of these courses may be in progress at the time of your application. So say you were taking chem and microbio um, the semester when you're applying, you won't be able to do that because only one of these courses can be in progress. Only one of these science courses may be a repeat. So you can only repeat one of these courses. Um, all of these science courses are calculated as four units. Um, I think this only applies to chemistry because as far as I know, the rest of them were four units, but chemistry is five units, but it doesn't really matter because if you still get an A in it, you would still get um, the 4.0. Again, pluses and minuses are not included in any of the nursing GPA calculations. So if you get a B minus or B plus, it's still counted as a B and you need a grade of C minus or better in each course. Okay. Then we have the nursing GPA. Nursing GPA is sort of like the science GPA. You do, this one you need a little bit higher GPA. Um, this one you need a 3.3 .3 to apply. And this one includes, see it includes your eight prereqs, which was um, the four science classes and the four GEs, and then your four co-recs, which were the facts, psych, child development, and then the extra societal cultural patterns class. And then um, you can have a maximum of 12 courses. Uh, let's see. So all science courses are calculated as four units, as I said, for the science GPA. And then all other courses are calculated as three units. Only three of the 12 prereqs and co-requisite co grades may be repeats. But only one of the three repeats may be a science course. So again, back to the science GPA, only one of the three repeats may be a science course, and the other two could be any other prereq or co-rec. Does that make sense? If you use, if you repeat a course, but you use your first attempt, it's not considered a repeat. Um, one non-science and one science prerequisite course 
a two total may be in the may be in progress at the time of application. So let's say you were taking microbiology and and a prereq and statistics. Those could be in progress by the at the time you apply, but it cannot be more than that. And it has to be one non-science and one science. Um, however, there are no limit on the number of in progress co-requisite courses. You could take you could take the like the second semester before you apply. The second semester of say your sophomore year, you could take all your four co-requisite courses and that would still be fine. Um, again, the, you guys aren't required to take those co-requisite courses, but you need to complete them before um, admission into the nursing program. And then all eight prerequisite courses must be completed by the end of the spring term when applying for fall, and then um, must be completed by fall when applying for spring. So by the end of the spring term when applying for fall, yes. And then again, plus is a minus and then the grade of C. All right, let me look at the questions. Um, Bio 10 is not included in this GPA. Bio 10 was just like a um, prep preparatory class for Bio 25, um, which I wish a lot of students know, knew. I wish I knew that because then I would have taken Bio 10 and Bio 25 at the same time. Um, but yeah, you can do that. You can take Bio 10 and 25 at the same time because it's sort of just like a prep class for you. So a total of two non-science and science courses can be in progress. Correct, correct. Only one of those um, in, may be in progress. Sorry, take that back. Only two courses can be in progress when you apply, one non-science and one science. So a total of two. OK, yes. All right, and then this is your nursing GPA or your adjusted nursing GPA. Um, so this is where your co-requisite classes kind of help you. Um, so here we have, this is where you get the maximum 40 points, which is where you get the bulk of your points for your point system. Um, so under the conditions outlined below, candidates may omit up to two courses from their adjusted nursing GPA. So say you didn't like a grade from like a specific class, you can take that out of your um, GPA calculation and that's that's okay. But, but uh, one of the optional criteria is if you don't omit any courses from your GPA, you get an extra two points. So you kind of have to just calculate how beneficial it is to you if you, um, omit the course of the bad grade or if you get those extra two points. Does that make sense? Um, the adjusted nursing GPA must include at least two science grades, and those come from your science classes. Uh, candidates with 10 to 12 grades from your 10 to 12 um, prereqs plus the corecs, you can omit two grades from your adjusted nursing GPA. And that's if you take um, all the corecs as well. Candidates with nine grades, say you took all the prereqs and one extra um, corec, you can omit one grade from your adjusted nursing GPA. But if you only took all the eight um, prereqs, you cannot omit any grade. And then AP examination credit is considered a grade. There's no units or grade points. So it's just, you get it or you don't. And then in progress courses are not considered omission. So you cannot omit an in progress course that you're applying it during. Okay. So for your GPA, all other courses not listed are not taken into account. All of the courses not listed, correct. Yes, that, okay, yeah. Out of the four science courses, I have to include two or three. You have to include at least two of the science grades in your adjusted nursing GPA.
but I believe you still do have to complete those as your prereqs. Yes. Okay. Um, so here's like the point breakdown for the adjusted nursing GPA. And this you can see, like if you get a 3.98 to a 4.0, you get the total of 40 points into your um, points for admission. And then, yeah, so if you get the minimum that you need a 3.3 to a 3.317, that's just one point. And so you want to aim for at least um, half of the second row and then this third row here, because this is where a majority of your points are coming from. And again, you do need a minimum of 60 to apply, but I know average is around like 70, 75, somewhere around there. All right, now we're going on to the T's. So you guys know what the T's test is. Um, it's the test of essential academic skills. It tests for reading, writing, science, and math. Um, so for the T's, you get a maximum of 30 points. Those points are again, based off your score and what you get on the T's. Only three attempts are allowed. And those three attempts um, have to be taken within the five year period. So I had a student who had a question saying like, if she took it three times in the past a year and a half, and then she took it again, would that, would that um, attempt count? No, because it's only counted within a five year period. Um, any version is acceptable. Um, I know because of COVID, all the TC exam is online now, it's going to be proctored. Um, so it doesn't matter which location you pick as long as you take it at the day you stated. Um, for the online TC exam, I know they make you take a like a, a recording of your room before you start, and then they make you show your ID to make sure that you are the person taking the exam. <clears throat> Again, you need a 75% on the T's to apply, um, but most people in the nursing program have usually shoot for 80s or 90s. And you have to take the TEAS when applying to a clinical nursing program. So if you've taken a TEAS um, over five years ago, it is acceptable, um, but they won't be considered an attempt when determining the three attempt limit. So I believe scores over five years are acceptable. However, they will not be considered yeah, so it just won't be counted as an attempt. Um, there are no rules regarding how long you take the test between your first attempt and your second attempt, but um, ATI, which is the website that facilitates it, um, they recommend a month to allow you to review test results. When I took the test, I think I waited like 20 days, 20 give or take days to take my second attempt after my first attempt. Um, I know that they don't really provide a lot of advising for how to sign up for the TEAS because when I had to do it, it was a lot of asking people and I had a friend who was already in the nursing program, so she was a great help, but now that I'm here, I can show you guys. Um, the College of Continuing Education at Sacramento State is the, is the department that facilitates the, um, TEAS exam. So here's the link. I'll show you this. So when you go to this website, like it shows you um, the TEAS. Um, we have during normal times, Sacramento State, we would um, hold days for people to take the TEAS. But now it's again, it's just all online. But again, even if it was in person, it would be taken on the computers. Good question. Um, yeah. Um, so if I wanted to apply this fall, it's too late to take the T's exam? If you want to apply, yes. Deadline for fall is March 1st. Uh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so test format, again, it's going to be given in a computer. Um, once you 
start. Okay, so each session is time. And once you leave that section, you aren't permitted to go back to that previous session. But I believe you can go back and forth between questions. It's just you cannot go back and forth between sections. So once you're done with the math section, you're done. You can't go back. Um, the exam is about, I believe, like four hours. And there are no breaks. There's no scheduled breaks. Calculators are not allowed. Um, the ATI website provides a calculator for you. Um, if you were to cancel or reschedule, um, you're responsible for repaying and rescheduling. There are no refunds. I have another question. Uh, Sorry. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> Where did you, so you're in the nursing program, right? Because I came here kind of late. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Where did you practice for this, like to take it? Yeah, yeah. I could show you all the, um, the my different uh, resources that I had. Okay. Yeah. I know some people would get those um, those uh, TIS books from like, I think Kaplan or stuff like that. I personally didn't use that because I knew that the only section that I needed to focus on was the science portion. And the science portion was either you knew it or you didn't. It was just a lot of memorization, especially from Bio 26. It was a lot of physiology. And so what I did was I just like studied a lot of the science portion. There were some other questions. Mm -hmm. um, a student asked, when do you suggest they take the T's? Okay, so you should take your T's definitely before the deadline. So if you were applying for fall, you have to take your T's before March 1st. And if you're applying for spring, you have to take it before October 1st because you have to send your scores in. And also, uh, to add that, I think it would help too if you took in a lot of those science courses, right? Mm -hmm. I, I would recommend you take, um, you take it, you take the T's right after you take Bio 26 because again, a lot of it is from Bio 26. Yeah, because I had a friend who took bio 25 and he didn't take 26 yet and he went to take the T's and he didn't do that well. But when he was taking 26, he was like, oh, this this is like everything that's on the T's. Um, I, I, can, I can share you guys my T score. I My first attempt I got uh, in the 80s and then my second attempt I got in the 90s. Really fast, sorry. Mm-hmm. So... Did you ever get all A's or did you miss like some B's? Because I heard that they forgive when you get two bad grades that are not, that are not A's. Mm -hmm. You can omit those um, grades as I talked about earlier. Um, let me see if I can go back for you. So you can omit, um, I believe. Do you mind telling us if you did get any other grades or you just got straight A's? Like, I, I did get straight A's. Yes, correct. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do you yeah. Think and so, got in without it, like with some B's? Um, not that I know, of, but I do have some guest speakers later um, that will share their experience. I personally don't ask people what they got as their grades, mm -hmm. but yeah um let me see so you can okay so if you have 10 to 12 grades which is your prereqs plus your corex you can omit two grades from your nursing your adjusted nursing gpa and your adjusted nursing gpa is the one that gives you the points right does that make sense so if you have nine grades which is like if you took all your prereqs and then an extra corex you can om omit one grade and then uh, the adjusted nursing GPA has to have two science grades. And for um, the A's exam, there's about 170 questions for the exam. Does that, is, that um, a, is that right? I don't remember how many questions there were, but that does sound right. Um, I took my T's second semester. Yeah, the summer before my second semester of sophomore year. Let, wait, hold on. Let me think about that. <laughs> second, yes, because I took it after I took bio 26. Just 
just take it after you take bio 26 this is the best advice I could give you. Could you take bio 39 first and then bio 26? No, you um, bio 26 is a prereq for bio 39, I believe. And chem is also a prereq for bio 39. Um, so you can omit up to two classes, right? Not three? Yeah, up to two. So if you and have 10 to 12 grades, you can admit up to two. And those two can be science courses, right? Two science courses? I believe so, because it says you only need to include two of your science courses. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. um, omit means you can like take it out of your calculations for GPA. So like you can act like it never existed when calculating your GPA. Um, are the TEAS tests offered year round? Yes, they are. You just have to find the correct date for it. It's on the website as well. Um, the TEAS, the math portion of the TEAS is I would say like basic algebra. It's not even statistics. Well, maybe a little bit statistics, but majority of it is algebra. So if you go back to here, um, for registration, so they have two PDFs here. So if you go to this website, uh, ATI testing, this is where you would sign up for the TEAS. You would first have to make um, an account. Uh, you would press the nursing student one. Okay, I guess it's not gonna load. <laughs> and then going back here, this PDF shows you how to create an account. And then this one would show you how to register for account. Make sure you register for the correct one because I know um, there's like two of them that say like Cal State Sacramento, but I believe it's the one that says C8 Sacramento State. But again, you can always ask uh, when the time comes. Okay. Um, if you have any questions regarding registering, you can um, contact the College of Continuing Education at this email here. Again, the last day to take the TEAS is for fall is March 1st, and then for spring is October 1st, and there are no exceptions to these deadlines. And then if you do take the tests at a non-Sacramento State location, which is what it's going to be like for as of COVID, um, the transcript must be purchased online and sent to um, uh, CA State Sacramento. And I believe um, the transcript costs like around $20 but they do receive it the same day. And make sure you submit the one that you want to um, apply with. I lost my chat box. Okay, let me see if I have any questions. Uh, you said that if you repeat a course and it's your first attempt, it doesn't count. But what do you mean by first attempt? Like first attempt for that specific class? Um, it's, okay, if you repeat a course and it's, uh, I said, if you repeat a course and you use your first attempt, let's say you took the, you took a class and you got like an 85 and you didn't really like it. So you wanted to retake it. But then that, that second time you got an 84. So if you use the 85, that's not gonna count as a, um, a repeat. Does that make sense? Did you spend five semesters to finish that's needed to? I did unfortunately have to spend five semesters to do it because I took bio 10 on its own without bio 25 when you could take bio 10, 25, um, when you could split up your four STEM courses for your two years, your first two years. And so that's when you would only take four semesters, but I did not do that. Um, do you have to be a nursing major to take the TEAS? I don't think so, but you need to take the TEAS to become a nursing major. <laughs> um, I waited 20 days to retake, around give or take 20 days to retake my TEAS. And I took mine over the summer before fall 2020 because I was going to apply for spring 2021. Um, optional criteria, I will get to that next. Here's the answer. Uh, how, oh yeah. Is omitting and changing, omitting a grade and changing a grade to no credit the same thing essentially? 
omitting. Ooh, that is new because of COVID. I believe you would have to ask the nursing department about that just cause it's like COVID and credit, no credit. Yeah, I would say just ask the nursing department just to be sure. What does it mean? Okay, yeah, the environmental background, I'll get to that. Um, how long does it take for you to get your T's? Right after you submit your test, it gives you the results immediately. So you would know right away what you would get. It is a little nerve wracking, but at least you know, right? <laughs> um, how long does it take for SAC to receive it? Um, they say right here, results are usually received same day, but I would still just for like timing purposes, I would do like right after you take your exam and you know that that's the score you want to send or just before the deadline. Um, yeah, you would get your, your results immediately. And so here's the breakdown, point breakdown for the TIS exam. So this is your point breakdown. So let's say you get the 98.2 to 100 percentile. This is percent, right? If you get between this percent, you get the maximum 30 points. Um, but again, most people have that have been admitted been usually getting like between low 90s, high 80s for your T's points, right? And then here we have the optional criteria. Um, there are six categories and you can get up to, again, 18 points. So this is a health related work experience we talked about, which is like the volunteer work. Um, you can get uh, one, two, three points, maximum of three, and that's dependent on how many hours you work. So if you work from 50 to 74, you get one point, 75 to 99, two points, and then 100 or more, you get three points max. Um, I think a question earlier was, when should we complete these work-related hours? You should do them before you apply for the program. And then we have the bilingual language profic proficiency. You get a maximum of three points. Um, I did this one when I was applying. And so Fernando did put in the chat the link to find the instructor to test for your language. Um, because of COVID, it's done through Zoom, and basically that instructor would just speak to you in that language that you chose, and then you would sign a paper, the instructor would sign a paper, and you would submit that along with your application. And it's only um, for my language, uh, which is Cantonese. Um, I only did speaking purposes. I didn't have to read or write. Because it's only proficiency. So they don't, I don't think they require a lot. As long as what the instructor told me was, as long as you get the point across, then you should be okay. Um, if you're a first generation college student, you get four points. When you're applying and on your application, if you check this one and it turns out on your record that you're not a first generation college student, you just won't get the points when they review it. Same thing with your environmental background. Environmental background is if you are a Sac State student, if you, I believe if you went to a local high school in Sacramento area, or if you were um, a community college student also in the Sacramento area. And then here's where, if you don't omit any courses from your adjusted nursing GPA, you get an extra two points in your um, point system. <clears throat> Excuse me. So again, you would have to just calculate uh, which one's more beneficial for you if you took out those two, those courses, or if you get these two points. Same thing with the no repeated courses. So, well, this one you can't really decide. It's just if you get those two points for not repeating any courses. I'm gonna check the chat now. There was a student that asked if they can use their volunteer hours from high school for the criteria. Uh, volunteer hours. I don't think so. 
I know a lot of the pre-nursing students that I was like taking prereqs with did a lot of their volunteer hours when they were in college just because they were like 18 and they had um and they didn't need like a parent to sign off on those so I think you would just need to do volunteer hours again but it could be wrong um how long would you speak for for the bilingual proficiency it's just um however long the instructor like talks to for mine I believe it was like it was just like a conversation you know the the instructor would talk to you in your your chosen language and you would just answer to them and it's just like a conversation they just, they just want to know if you can in, understand it and if you can um like reciprocate the understanding when well, my instructor he asked me some like medical terms not like super super medical he asked like like headaches or like a stethoscope or stuff like that and he asked me to translate that back into um the language that i chose and then we he asked me like some questions and yeah it was just like a conversation yeah ap language scores AP language scores won't work for the program. Um, if you have an AP language, I think you would still need to take the test, but you can look at that website because that would say it too. Um, am I able to use my externship hours from a clinic? I believe so. You can use those hours um, as long as you get like um, it signed off. But it has to be like like client. You have to be like working with a client care. Can you get a first generation college student points if you're a second bachelor student? Um, I think can you get okay. So the question was, can you get a first generation college student points if you're a second bachelor student? Um, there is a section for a second bachelor student um, towards the end. I have the website oh no i don't oh, know if it's gonna load okay yeah uh prerequisites i believe it's this one. Oh, let me click onto it i uploaded that link on the chat as well for the second bachelor's Your second thank you thank you fernando okay um let me go back to the presentation. Oops, oops, oops. Okay. Um, where did my chat go again? California State Seal of Biliteracy. I think that one does count. I know there is a specific one that they do count. Let's go back. There's an optional criteria. PDF that I put up right here. Okay. So I have all these PDFs for you guys. Um, this is all on the nursing site, but I'll, I can just show you. So here, this is what you would have to do for your health related work experience. Um, this one's a good one. The hours may be com combined from multiple locations. So let's say you start working at Kaiser and then you like switch to Sutter, you can um, combine those um you have to work okay this is it you have to work in an acute long-term clinical or community involving direct human client patient interaction that is what you needed it could be paid or volunteer paid or unpaid um these hours cannot be in progress when you're applying um here we go for bilingual language proficiency Um, let's see. So these are the approved languages. Um, they don't reward points. We regret points are not rewarded for French, German, or other languages where a need has not been identified. Um, 
if you want to do American Sign Language, you have to complete a four semester college level ASL course, which at Sac State is um, DEF 154, and it cannot be in progress, or three years of high school coursework for, I believe, the American Sign Language. Um, I don't see anything about the seal of biliteracy. You can definitely email them about that as well. Um, I can go back. I'll also upload the email for the nursing department for like quick questions <laughs> like that. Just yeah, especially yeah. there's like a lot, a lot of scenarios, like especially for the foreign language requirement. Yeah, yeah. They don't really specify it in those um, PDFs either. Um, okay, okay, whoa, whoa. Did you start your freshman year at Sac State? Yes, I did. I started at Sac State and then um, I honestly did not apply to any other nursing program when I applied for Sac State. Um, it was just, if I didn't get into the Sac State one, I would have gone into maybe health science or public health. Um, fourth semester just means um, you have to complete the two years of the courses as an ASL courses. Combining the hours, I think you would just get them signed off by the, um, the agency, the hospital, wherever you're um, volunteering at. Uh, how long is long term? I think for some um, volunteer work, like I know back in my hometown at St. Joseph's Hospital, they make you do a six six month um, commitment as a volunteer. So I believe something like that. Or um, I know there's one of them. I can't remember if it's Sutter or Kaiser, but there, there's one that you don't have to like be in a commitment for like, like six months where it's just, it's counted by hours. Um, once you're in the program, are you required to keep all your A's? Not necessarily. Um, what they told us when we first got into the program was that the hard part was over, you know, we were done competing with each other to get into the program. And now at this point, we're like helping each other pass nursing school. So you don't have to get an A, but it's, it would be nice, you know. <laughs> A lot of nursing students have to adjust from getting straight A's to like, not A's in nursing school, just because, yeah, just because nursing school is hard. <laughs> Okay, oops. So these are the deadlines. Um, I believe we're all Sac State students here, so this wouldn't apply to you guys, the university application. This would just mean you have to apply to Sac State before you can apply for the nursing program. So the nursing application opens on their website um, for fall, if you want to apply for the fall semester from February to March 1st. So if you were to apply for fall 2021, that did, that deadline would have closed because today's March 8th. Um, and then for spring, it would open September 1st to October 1st. And again, this is when you would need to get all your volunteer work, all your T's um, submitted and uh, transferred your transcript in. Um, there is a non-refundable evaluation fee of $35 with your application. This is just for them so they can like review your application. How many students were admitted into the nursing program this semester? And do you know how many will be admitted for fall 2021? Um, for fall 2020, the cohort before my cohort, I believe 40 was admitted and about 300 applied. For my cohort, um, I'm not sure how many applied. They don't have the statistics up yet, but I believe again, 40, admitted um there were they saved 20 for i think um priority from last semester from fall 2020 
So that became a total of 60 students. I'm not sure how that works, but they saved priority seats for from fall 2020. And it only decreased because usually during normal times, um, the program would admit 80 students, but because of COVID, they had to decrease the class sizes down and now they only accepted around like 40 students. How many Sac State students? I personally don't know that, but I know a lot of the, the people in my cohort are, um, they're from like community colleges or um, they're on their like their second bachelors and stuff like that, so. Okay, and then here are more uh, deadlines and dates. Um, so as a freshman, they advise you to attend a group advising for the BSN. It's not, rec it's not required, um, but it is recommended. But from what I heard, it's, it's hard to get uh, advising through group advising because you're in a group and it's not really one-on-one. -on -one. Um, again, this probably wouldn't apply to us as we are all Sac State students already. Um, again, the application would open on the BSN homepage for fall in February and at March, and then for spring from September to October. And then same, that's when it would be due. You can turn it in anytime, but the last day you can turn it in is March 1st or October 1st. Um, yeah, so your tease has to be done before March 1st and before October 1st. Um, you have to send your transcript if you want to apply for fall on March 15th. So that gives you a little bit of time to submit your scores, but you have to complete the TEAS before March 1st, right? If you're applying for fall, so. Um, if you applied, you would find out if you are selected, if you're alternate, or if you were ineligible. Um, at the end of April, if you were applying for fall, or at the end of November, if you're applying for spring. And then if you do get admitted, you have mandatory new student orientation, which is always the one day, Wednesday before the first day of instruction. Okay, yeah. Um, so now this is the repeat policy for um, courses. Only three of the 12 prerequisite and co-requisite grades may be repeats, and only one of those repeats may be a science course. So this is kind of like um, the omit, I think, yeah. So only three of them can be repeats, but only one of them can be a science. A third attempt will not be considered. Um, you will just be ineligible if you have a third attempt. You will just need to use your first or second attempt. Um, courses over seven years old on the first day of instructions are acceptable, but they're not included in the repeat count. So it just it just doesn't count as a repeat. Um, but you won't receive the no repeat optional criteria points. So remember, um, if you have no repeats as an optional criteria, you would get two extra points. But if you do have a course over seven years ago and you want to use that, you will not receive those optional points. Um, the repeats are evaluated based on content, not necessarily course numbers. So if the course content is essentially the same, that counts as a repeat. You just have to find out um, the diff how the different courses transfer into each other, like if you were to take one at a community college and if you were to take one at Sex State. And withdrawals are not considered repeats. So I don't think they're considered as a grade either, because if you just dropped out of it. Is alternate like waitlisted? I believe so because for this semester we had um, they had priority. I think I think it was like something for like priority seats for fall 2020, and I think that's what it means by waitlisted. So since they couldn't get in last semester, they put them into this semester. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so this is the in-progress policy. Um, so as a Sac State student, you can have one science and one non-science prereq course um, in progress at the time of applications. There are no exceptions to this. Um, so the science prereqs includes, you know, your anatomy, physiology, chemistry, and microbiology. 
And then your non-science is your other GEs. Again, all of the eight prereqs must be completed by the end of spring when applying for fall or by end of fall when applying for spring. When applying for a fall term, coursework completed in the summer will not be considered. Okay, this is very important because I know you guys asked about summer courses. So if you're applying for a fall term, so let's say you applied this, this um, from like February to March, and you wanted to take a course over this summer, that, that class wouldn't count as like in progress or just it just wouldn't count. You would, you would need to take that before you apply. Um, nutrition, so your co-recs have to be completed before the second semester of your clinical nursing program. So like once you get into the nursing program, they have to be completed before your second semester. So you could take it alongside your first semester nursing classes if you were to do so. But then your, your societal cultural patterns course could be completed just before graduation. But there is, again, no limit on the in-progress co-requisite courses. So um, you can take them. Can you repeat? Yeah. Um, so what, what do you mean by the summer course will not be considered? So if you take it, wait, I don't understand what it means. Mm -hmm. So let's say you applied this, this um, time frame from February to March for fall 2021 and you wanted to take a course this summer. Oh, okay, you meant after. Yeah. I thought you meant if you yeah, yeah. took it before, it yeah, wouldn't no, count. No. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Okay, that makes sense, thank you. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, Let me look at the questions. Um, I was not waitlisted, I was admitted. If I will just share with you guys, I think the point cut off was 72 points and I got 73 points. Okay, tiebreakers. So, so say like someone gets the same amount of points. Someone got the same amount, 73 as me. Um, they would look at your non-adjusted nursing GPA. They would look at um, the fewest prereq and co-rec course repeats. They would look at your T-score and then they would look at your military service. And this would go in like priority. So if there were tiebreakers, this is what they would factor into those tiebreakers. Um, so this is just for um, California residencies. So due to the impact of the nursing program, California residency is required to apply for the clinical traditional BSN program, but there is an exception for deferred action for childhood arrivals, STACUS, and AB 540 students and students with an approved military fee waiver. Um, expressed interest nursing students attending the university um, to complete the prereqs for admission are not, uh, not required to be residents of California. However, non-resident fees are higher. And then if you have more inform if you need information about California residency, um, you can contact them here, Lassen Hall, that would be if we're on person, but you can call them here or you can email them here. Okay, and then um, that's just, we have links now. So this website, this is just the full website of the nursing. So here we have, you know, application instructions. These are like all the PDFs you would need, um, the forms you would need to fill out for your health-related experience or your bilingual proficiency, um, second bachelor's, um, optional criteria. Here are the applicant pool statistics. Here's from fall 2020. So not my cohort, but the cohort before me. 311, 311 um, students applied, 40 enrolled. And then point cutoff 82. Then you can see their GPAs here, their average T score, and all that. See, the previous semesters they had 80, around 80 students, but because of COVID, they had to have they have to split it into 40. Okay. 
And then another really helpful uh, link that I added here is the GPA calculator, which is what um, it's also on this website here. If you go to el eligibility point and GPA calculator, you would just insert all your stuff. This is technically how the application looks like. Um, you would fill it out. You put your highest T-score. You would check if you have any of these. Um, this will be, the optional criteria will be reviewed um, upon submission. So like if you check that you were a first generation college student and they find out that you're not, you just won't get the points for it, but they will check. Um, so here you could put all your courses and everything when you took in what grade you got. And, and then you would calculate to get your science GPA, your nursing GPA, your adjusted nursing GPA, and then the total points that you would get. Yeah, and so this is exactly how the nursing application would look like. But this is just to help you calculate um, your points while you're in progress. I have a question. Yeah. If a student is repeating a course, mm -hmm. Uh, let's say first time they got it was like a D, the second time they took it, they got a B. The nursing program, they, they would take it in as a C, right? Because it would be averaged out or would they take in the new grade? Is that a question we asked them? Um, from what I know, they just said like based on repeats right here, it would just, you would just use your second attempt grade, oops. Yeah, you would just either use your first or your second attempt. So, yeah. I don't know if that average, cause I, I remember hearing about it, but I don't think that applies to this repeat policy anymore. Yeah, it is yeah. confusing. Cause at Sac State, if you fail a course, but you retook it. Mm -hmm. um, Old grade goes away, new grade comes in. But if you repeat it a third time, they average out the three grades. Oh, okay. That is something new. I did not know that. But it might be different with nursing because they're, <laughs> they're yeah, right maybe. <laughs> maybe. It's just I know that they would just use your your repeat grade if you were to choose to use your repeat. Um let me look at the chat again. I, yeah, I didn't get to do um, the volunteer option, but what I got to do, let's look at the optional criteria. Um, I did the bilingual language proficiency. Um, I had the environmental background because if you are a Sac State student, I think you just get those points. And then I had no courses omitted and no courses repeated. Um, technically, I am a first generation student because only my father went to community college, but I guess they counted that as not first generation. So they didn't give me those points. Um, do I think that the amount of students they accept will start to go back up if we go back to mostly on-campus classes? Possibly, um, as of right now, our nursing classes, we have face-to-face -face classes, but again, they're very limited and like there's only like one section on campus at a time, but Possibly when things get better, I know, I think that they will admit more students. Um, okay. So do I have my guest speakers here? Where yes, are they? Do. Oh, yay. Okay. So um, I don't know if they're all here and if they're all going to speak, but these are just some of the students in my cohort this semester and they're I just I just asked them to like talk about their experience so you guys could take it away introduce yourself first please all right I can go first my name is Roman Estro can you guys hear me well yeah we can hear you all right so yeah uh this is my first semester in nursing school and back in the day like I said uh, I didn't do so well in school so to be honest with you guys I almost got held back twice and only in my junior year in high school, that's when I started to focus on schooling. That's when my GPA went like from 2.9 in high school, just in one year, like to 3.2. Mm -hmm. 
And then when I started college, I'm like, okay, I should just focus on schooling because that's more important to me. Back in the day, it was just like video games, uh, chilling with friends, stuff like that. So when I started college, that's when I started to focus more on school. And I already knew what I wanted to do. So I wanted to do something in medicine. So I had different routes, either go to med school or take my prereqs or just do a bio major, biology major, or go to nursing school. So first I finished my biology major to apply for med school, but I needed a bachelor's for nursing school. So then I just took my prereqs and the most important thing for nursing school, I'll say, is good GPA and good grades. You can, you can still get a couple of Bs, you can omit them, but just try your best to get all A's and do well on the T's. And so then after finishing my bio major and taking all the prereqs for nursing school, I applied to Sac State and I came from a community college from Las Rios districts initially. So it doesn't really matter where you come from to nursing school or to Sac State. So yeah, after doing that, I applied only to one school, which was Sac State. I got in and I noticed that before that, it was all competition. In college, everywhere else, it was just competition. Nursing school, that's where we have to help each other out. Grades don't re really matter anymore. You got in, you had the struggle in college to get all the A's, who cares? Right now, it's just helping out each other to succeed, to pass all your classes. If you don't get A on the exam, who really cares? Just pass your exams, that's pretty much it. And just, yeah, just help each other out. If you need help, there's a lot of office hours you can go to, Zoom meetings, labs, ask your professors, ask everyone just so you'll succeed and know, know your things, what you have to do. So uh, even in college, when I was starting my nursing career or applying to nursing school, my main thing was having good friends. So have good friends who are going to be in the same major or similar major. So mostly all my friends were in like going to dental school or medical school, nursing school. That's that, that was my surroundings. So basically, if I needed help, I'll just ask them. Like, uh, if I need help in biology, for example, AP, I'll just ask them. So having good friends that are in the same major, that really helps me out as well. And on my T's, uh, I had to take them twice because I took AP1 in summer and I took the T's exam right after my summer class. So I did not take AP2. So I got the first time I got like a mid 80 and the second time I got a high 80, but it doesn't really matter. Just if, uh, if I would tell my friends I had to apply for T's, I would just tell them to apply once and just make two dates maybe. So make a date at like in August and then make a date in October. Well, that was for me. Uh, just in case you don't do so well, you're not really happy with your grade, just take it again and that's pretty much it. Uh, optional criteria, I got all the points. So for volunteering work, I saw you guys had a lot of questions. So for volunteering work, it doesn't really matter where you volunteer. I volunteered in a podiatry clinic, which was put an ankle doctor. So I just pretty much followed my doctor he did, he did the talking, I talked with patients a bit, and that's pretty much it. You can volunteer in dental as in the, with a dentist and like with the elders people, it doesn't really matter where, where you volunteer, you just have to get your paper signed off and the doctor or the nurse or someone else have to write in what you did. And so right now, my, my priority is nursing. So back in the day, like, I did not care about school, nothing right now. Priority is the nursing, and that's pretty much it. So just do your best. Try to get your good grades and good GPAs. Try hard and good, uh, have good friends. Have not connections, but just help each other out in, or, in order to succeed. And then go as friends to nursing school and help each other out in nursing school and throughout your life. That way, I think you will all succeed and 
do good in nursing school and everywhere else you'll go. Thank you for sharing, Roman. Um, quick question. Uh, you said you were uh, at a community college in Los Rios district. Were you able to get those environmental background optional criteria points because yeah. you were? OK, yeah. there you go. Mm -hmm. um, do I have another guest speaker? Yeah, I can go. All right, thank you. Hi, guys, my name is Vanessa. Um, thank you, Roman, for sharing. I think you hit up some really good points. Um, let's see. So I also came from a community college. I came from Sierra College and um, I was also able to get those points. Um, I know a lot of you had questions about like repeating or um, omitting grades. And I was actually one of those students. So to answer that question, I was, I had received um, like two Bs and I received, uh, or I received three, three Bs. Um, I, I repeated one class, so I was able to get an A, and I just omitted the other two Bs that I got, which raised my um, GPA up to a 4.0, which I highly recommend. If you, you By just omitting those grades, um, you're able to get so many points because when I had um, the Bs, it literally dropped my score from 11 points. And then once I omitted the grades, I received 11 points. Um, so definitely, if you can omit grades, I was really happy when they offered that. Um, let's see. Um, but yeah, just just go, go, getting into the nursing program, it's it really is no joke. I mean, I could just advise you guys to just really work hard and and do well. I mean, if you do get if you do get um a B or a C, that's fine because again, they give you those chances of of um of uh, just omitting. Um, so yeah, I'm just being really thankful for that. Um, yeah, I mean, if you guys have any other questions, just let me know. Um, I also did the, um, the uh, what is that? Sorry. Um, the is English the military? Oh. Yeah. Oh yeah, I did that too. I guess my, um, I'm trying to remember what was on there. The work experience, I was able to get work experience through um, the military, um, but I, I was just doing like small things here and there. I was just doing um, like uh, patient administration work, which is just like paperwork, kind of like Roman said, you could really get volunteer work um, doing anything. Um, I also did the bilingual form and I did that at Sierra College. So it, it was a little different comparing to Sac State there's like an extra form that you need to fill out if you come from a community college. Um, so just make sure that you kind of check that out. It should be on the nursing website and it gives you uh, instructions on how to fill that out. Um, but yeah, you're able to do that too. So for those of you who are who come from a community college, just, just double check on that. Um, and yeah, I think that's it for me. And if you guys have any questions for me, like for those of you who are at a community college or questions about... Um, just repeating courses or how to admit, just, just ask away. Thank yeah. you. Thank, thank you, Vanessa, for sharing. Of course. Um, yeah, and it's really helpful that we have like different students with different um, experiences at, with applying because like for me, I had a different experience in applying and then my cohorts, they had different experience. So it's really nice to get that different, um, the, the different views. Um, I had one more question in the chat. Um, currently the nursing program is a bit of both. It is virtual and in-person. We have some in-person labs, which are scheduled. We have clinicals one day a week. Um, our exams are in person. We have some lectures online, but yeah, most it's, it's just a hybrid, yeah. Um, but other than that, do you guys have any more questions for me? This is my email here. If you guys want to shoot me an email, if you want to write it down, but any questions, if I can't answer it, maybe my cohorts will be able to answer it. Um, but yeah, if you guys want to write that down. I know um, one of the students asked me if you can get my information so we could speak one on one. But again, you can also make an appointment with me during my office hours. We go back to the front at park and we could speak those days too. Right here, my office hours are right here. 
All right. Any any more questions? I knew I thought I threw a lot of like information at you guys. <laughs> I hope that was helpful. Oh, I see in chat. Yes, my background is from New Girl. <laughs> Uh, for fall, when we hear back in late April, if we got into the program or not, do we see how many points we got and where we ranked among other applicants? Um, I think they will show you a breakdown of the points that you got, but I'm not sure if they show you how um, how you ranked against other applicants. Roman, Vanessa, did it? Do you guys remember if it showed you how you ranked against other applicants? No, on mine it just showed me the overall score that I got so just like the points which is what I put in yeah 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 so it was just it would just show you um what how many points you got in total but I think the next semester after that it would show you like the statistics as as it did for like fall 2020 yeah okay of course guys thank you for coming this is my first workshop <laughs> I will have more in the future. Um, I want to do one specifically just for the T's and studying for the T's because I know you guys um, have questions about that. Um, and then I'm going to try to do one about alternative nursing schools because I know Sac State's program is pretty difficult to get into. And then I'll try to get guest speakers who have taken prereqs at Sac State but have um, transferred to a different nursing school. Thank you guys. <laughs> um, I have one more question. When applying, do they ask what extracurricular activities we did? Like to show how much we are involved. Um, I don't think it asks you for extracurricular. I think the only extracurricular they asked was the um, volunteer work. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you guys for coming.